best stories in sports. This is an E60 feature presentation. I hop in, buddy, in back seat. You ready to roll? It's summertime in Dallas. You guys think there'll be any fish out there? Yeah. Look. Summer. Summer, they, they're gonna be out? Yeah. What kind of a father is Jason? The best. He has so much energy. He's so awesome. Duck. Duck? Yeah, there's the ducks. Yeah, you see the ducks? One, two, three. There you go. Now watch it. He just is, you know, their hero. I got one nice. fish. Yeah. Boy, Coop. I caught one. Awesome. Jason Witten is the father he wishes he had had. There we go. Today, an amateur watch fishing instructor. Watch the bobber. A wiffle ball pitcher. Oh, nice, nice. On Sundays. He's safe. He's something else. I think he's missed one game in 12 years. People just don't understand how incredible that really is. He just has it inside of him. And uh, he could probably go back to his childhood in some way. That childhood, marred by the violent nights that tore his family apart, still haunts him. There was a lot of hurt. You know, it was like a nightmare. But some of the greatest qualities that I have as an individual, as a football player, as a husband, as a man, are the things that I learned through those experiences. May 6th, 1982, Christopher Jason Witten was born. Jason and his two older brothers were raised in an apartment in the Washington, D.C. suburbs by their mother, Kim, a stay-at-home mom, and their father, Eddie. For several years, it was, you know, really good. Their dad was very much a part of their life. But, you know, things changed. That change came to the Witten household when Jason was six and his father's behavior became erratic. You didn't know which man was gonna come home, you know, and you know, more times than not, it was gonna be the dad you love. But there were situations when it was somebody that you hope would never come back. There was nights where, you know, the, the police was coming to the, to the house because there was an argument or, um, alcohol and drug abuse was involved and domestic violence was involved in our life to, to a point that um, you didn't know which way it was going to go. Did you see your father strike your mother? Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen him. I saw him abuse my mom for sure. Did he abuse you? No. Um, you know, I think being the youngest, a lot of that was to others, not to me. The worst part was probably seeing my kids hurt. I really don't want to talk about that. Jason's mother says she and Jason's two older brothers were abused on and off for five years. In 1993, when Jason was 11, his mother took her boys and left Jason's father. She went 400 miles to Elizabethton, Tennessee, where she'd grown up. Moving in with their grandparents, the boys had a new father figure. I think it's important that a man be a man. And be a man, you got to have proper manners open the doors for women, you know, don't sit down until they sit down. I mean, those are manner things that you learn when you're a kid. Dave Ryder was also a legendary high school football coach, and he would mold Jason into a dominating player on both sides of the ball. 
Later, at the University of Tennessee, Witten would shoot to stardom as a tight end. After an All-SEC junior season, he entered the 2003 NFL Draft. In Dallas, Witten quickly developed into a pass-catching sensation. By 2008, he was an All-Pro, one of the best tight ends in football. That was the year he started the SCORE Foundation, and over the last six years, it's connected male mentors with more than 6,000 children living in domestic violence shelters across the state of Texas. I think when they hear my story, I think it becomes real life. This is who you are, but you know what? This is where we're going to go, and we can go a different route. You can break that cycle. Jason has taken a leadership role in an issue far before the NFL ever got here, you know what I mean? He, uh, and so for him to stand up and to say, I want to make a difference, Jason is going to change the lives of many people. The toughness that defines Witten as a football player wasn't developed on the field, but in the crucible of domestic violence. Overcoming that pain and fear to become a better man than his father, that, he says, has been the greatest victory for himself and his family. I know that what drives him in a lot of ways is that he's gonna ha his kids are going to have the father that he never did have. There's a little bit of pride in you that says, hey, we bounced back. We were able to hold up, and uh, we're better because of that.